Hello, this is the voice of Stuart Pierce, and welcome to my series of Deep Dialogues. These are vital conversations I engage in with global soul stewards from all over the planet, providing us with vital understandings about how we can create a new hierarchy of values to help us evolve into a brave new world. I hope you enjoy, and thanks for listening. Welcome to RJ. Welcome to all of you wonderful people in the chat box. Stacy, Melody, Chrissy, DZ. DZ, you came. DZ just left a really big comment on the uh, speaker that we had on Deep Dialogues last week, which I responded to and invited her to come and hear you. So this is absolutely wonderful. So ladies and gentlemen, I must introduce you to this favored guest, this wonderful gentleman that we have here for this week's Deep Dialogues. I have quite a long bio, but I really feel that every moment of it is quintessential. And so forgive me. So this is RJ Spina. And RJ is a metaphysical teacher and healer who in 2016 became paralyzed from the chest down, requiring emergency life-saving surgery. His body experienced a deadly staph infection that compressed his spinal cord and created all sorts of other challenges, such as type 1 diabetes, hypothyroidism, autoimmune disease, etc., 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 RJ spent three months in a hospital rehabilitation center being given antibiotics, drugs, painkillers, and receiving rudimentary physical therapy, but was given a zero chance of ever walking again. But today, RJ is no longer paralyzed. In fact, within the first 100 days of post-emergency surgery, he walked unassisted as indeed he had predicted whilst in ICU. RJ's diagnosed illness and disease have been completely resolved after the mystery lethal infection that months of powerful antibiotics could not cure. RJ now reveals how to use energy healing to transcend suffering and much, much more, to find inner peace and to embrace the invis invincible celestial self. His work presents a unique seven-step system that guides you through the process of energetic attunement and neural re rewiring to support your wellness goals, such as those related to physical illness, pain, depression, anxiety, addiction, and much, much more. And it is my great pleasure to have him here on this deep dialogue. In fact, all the way through this season, I've been looking forward to this moment. <laughs> so, brother, welcome, 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 welcome. Um, I'd love you if you could just share with us in synthesis the extraordinary pre, during, and post experience of paralysis, what your contextualized values are. Well, yes, it'd be my pleasure. And thank you very much for having me, Stuart. It's my, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'll, I'll give the briefest of context, <clears throat> and then I'll kind of fast forward to just before the illness, the illness, and we'll say where I am today. Uh, as a, as a child, um, I would, what we now call astral project, I would leave my body regularly without, uh, certainly without training. I was a little kid. Um, it became tangibly known to me that I am spirit or consciousness or what I call sentience and that the physical or human aspect of myself is really just a vehicle that we temporarily wear to experience physical reality or the physical universe. And so I was leaving my body every day, multiple times a day as a child. And I would uh, explore what I now know to understand as different frequencies and dimensions, different realities. And I would interact with uh, what we would term advanced beings and I used to even have a mantra, as, if that's not word enough, I used to even have a mantra as a kid, Stuart. And I used to say to myself when I would explore these higher, these, these higher realms through my own higher mind, I would say that the mantra was, I retain all information and knowledge contained within this realm. And I would say that over and over and over again as a little kid. And in a lot of ways, what it felt like I was doing was that every time I would explore and then quote unquote come back into my body, I was wiser for it. And 
I seem to have retained uh, or had awakened myself to be able to uh, operate at that level even as a kid. So, <clears throat> and I also used to say as a kid, if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. So uh, and I think I was remembering what was going to happen, if that, yeah. if, if that makes yeah. sense. Absolutely. So, yeah, so I, th I just came into this world completely detached uh, from the body. I knew I was not the body and that kind of continued. So if we can fast forward in my 20s, uh, I had normal jobs my whole life. Um, I used to give past life readings to people. I used to do things, you know, very quietly, uh, help people explore consciousness, explain metaphysics to people. But it, I certainly didn't make a living from it. Um, I don't think I was ready. Hmm. Uh, I used to say, oh, the world's not ready. No, I, I wasn't ready. So uh, that was that was my way of justifying it. Yeah. But if we if we fast forward it all the way to, to 2016, seven years, almost seven years now is amazing. Um, I got very, very sick, very sick around Christmas time. I felt awful. I had gotten to the point of just getting out of bed and going to the living room to sit in the chair was 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 too much for me. Um, about a month into that, I, I just checked myself into the into the hospital and they said that uh i had a lethal staph infection they said that i had about 48 hours to live they diagnosed me with all these diseases these i've never heard of in my life i wound up spending two weeks in the hospital then inundating me with antibiotics painkillers all this kind of stuff <clears throat> i didn't really feel that much better but they they discharged me and the short story is that six weeks later, that staph infection uh, paralyzed me. So I literally became, I'm doing air quotes, permanently paralyzed from the chest down from the staph infection that was supposed to be treated through the weeks in the hospital, all the antibiotics. And I was rushed uh, to the hospital for emergency life-saving surgery where they performed something called a laminectomy. Mm -hmm. That's where they literally scrape off the infection off of, off of my spine. There's, you can see the surgeon's notes that I, this is in a, a video that I made because I knew no one believed that I was going to put myself back together. So yeah. I made sure to videotape it and have documentation. So <clears throat> I was paralyzed, told it was permanent. They did the operation. And so then I woke up from the operation, Stuart. And, and the only way I can really describe it with any kind of accuracy is to say that when I awakened from emergency life-saving surgery, I had awakened into authentic cosmic consciousness. Hmm. I had, I like to term it as I had remembered everything. I remembered how healing works. I remembered the metaphysics of it. I could see it. I could experience it. It's as if someone had pulled the curtain back. And that mantra used to say that if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. It had become a muscle memory and it had been downloaded in that instant. And when I woke up three o'clock in the ICU, uh, still very sick and, and permanently paralyzed, the ICU nurse came in because she saw that I had I'd finally woken up and she asked me how I was doing. And I said, oh, man, I'm doing great. In fact, I'm going to heal myself and I'm going to walk in 100 days. And I literally started explaining to her in the ICU these authentically enlightened metaphysics about how self-healing and self-realization or enlightenment actually works. And I went in great detail about what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. I even told her that sort of when I would start to do this and when I would start to do that. And I said, in a hundred days, I won't be sick and I could walk all by myself. I absolutely guarantee it. It's a done deal. I know exactly what to do. And I remember the look that she gave me. It was two things, Stuart. One was, okay, it's too specific and I'm too, I'll use the word confident, but it's past confident. I was too specific for this to be just the meanderings of someone who's, you know, just lost it. It was ultra specific about all this. So she was looking at me like, that's impossible for anyone to know. But at the same time, everything I was saying, you could tell it was registering as if she knew what I was talking about. Like almost she was remembering how healing actually works. And she said, RJ, how do you know this? And I said, I, I remember. I simply, I simply remember. And it literally has been that way or the state of consciousness or state of being has been that way since since then. And just as I predicted on exactly the 100th day, I walked unassisted. I videotaped everything. There's documentation. There's uh, my MRI. There's surgeon's notes. The videos of myself unparalyzing myself are time stamped. 
because as I said, Stuart, I knew no one would believe that this was possible. And the only, um, the only guest I had was a Chinese medicine expert who would come see me two or three times a week while, while I was there. And, uh, He's actually the gentleman who wound up writing the forward for the book. Right. He's treated about 100,000 patients. He's, he's absolutely incredible at what he does. But he was witnessing and participating. He was witnessing this healing that, as he described, if he didn't see this firsthand, he would have said, this is absolutely impossible. You cannot go from where you were to where you are now, let alone in 100 days. It's just impossible to, to do it. He, he's like, I have to write the forward. For this book, I said, yeah, yeah, please do. And it was really through him. Hmm. And then I'll stop talking. It was really through him. Uh, he has a thriving practice in San Diego. And he said, RJ, I, I really want you to come to my clinic hmm. and start teaching everyone what you understand about metaphysics and meditation. Hmm. And I, I said, yeah, sure, that'd be, that, that'd be fun. And he's like, no, you have to. And the way he said it, I knew at that moment my life was going to change completely. And so I started showing up at his clinic on weekends. And then before you knew it, there was, you, you couldn't, there was too many people to even get into the clinic. Mm -hmm. And then shortly thereafter, it's so RJ, how can I, how can I work with you? How can I learn these things? And I just started seeing people teaching them the things that I, that I, that I understand that I've done with myself that I've now taught thousands and thousands of people to do for themselves. And that's really where the book came from is all the client stories, um, not just my own consciousness of what I did with myself, but the success stories that all these people have had all over the world. This is the book that RJ is referring to everybody, Supercharged Self-Healing. We'll make sure, and there, there of course, as you see on the screen is, is RJ's name. Um, we'll make sure that this reference and his uh, website is clearly within the, the program notes. This is extraordinary, you know, and of course we are hearing more and more and more about miraculous or supernatural healing that is taking place in many people. And I personally also have had experience, not in my own body, but helping others. Um, I've interfaced with female cancer over the last 40 years, and particularly over the last 20, 25 years, the, remark, uh, the remarkable amount of women who, who are pronounced dead, so to speak, by their oncologists. You have three months to live, you have terminal cancer. And we find a way of turning it around so that their oncologists say when they go back for, you know, the smear tests, you, you know, a miracle has happened, you have no cancer in your body. Um, so it's absolutely extraordinary. And, and I, I feel that the context from a cartographic point of view is really important because now you're on the east coast of the US, but you were there on the west coast and on the Pacific coastline. In, in San Diego. And those energies are extraordinarily healing. I always feel the Pacific coastline and it's by by no means um, uh, uh, a coincidence that uh, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda has his, mm. has his wonderful, had his wonderful center, which of course is still there in Encinitas, which is only what, just three quarters an hour drive north from San Diego. Um, but you were downloading some extraordinary material, evidently, both in your altered state of consciousness during the crisis, but also as a young as a young boy, as a young man. There you were genuinely astrally traveling. Um, and my first reckoning was that you were really in touch with the Akashic records within the planetary domain of of terra firma, of planet Earth. But at the same time, it seems that you were somewhere else during the crises. Is that something in your reckoning or how do you explain where the information came from or how it was triggered? Yeah, well, <clears throat> I call it a, a muscle memory or a remembering because as a little kid, I used to say that if I ever get sick, I'll just heal myself. Yeah. So now if someone would have asked me when I was much younger, okay, how does how does healing really work? I don't, I, Stuart, I wouldn't have had an answer. I knew that I knew. Yeah. I didn't have access to the specifics because it just wasn't time. Yeah. And through the through the destruction of my body, uh, it was ravaged with disease as well as permanently paralyzed from the chest down. So I I was afforded a, a state. I gave myself the gift of this. Mm -hmm. Normally, this kind of level of understanding and consciousness only occurs when you're outside of it outside of the body. Yeah. So I had complete detachment from my body, but my higher mind was completely and utterly online. Hmm. And so what I had planned for myself in this, in this incarnation as RJ 
to fully awaken myself and prove to myself yet again that I can put my body back together because it's just energy, put my body back together and then be able to offer the higher consciousness metaphysics to humanity mm-hmm. in a very sp- specific, repeatable and robust manner through the Ascend of Frequencies Healing Technique. Mm-hmm. The, it, in order to access the, the unlimited and the divine, one must be in an unlimited and divine state of being. Mm. And the destruction of my body freed me completely, mm. completely and utterly. And when I had awakened, I had, I had authentically awakened into my, into my cosmic consciousness, into what I, what, what I am familiar with. I am, I had awakened into that state. So it was a re it was a remembering. Mm. It was an absolute remembering. It's not so much, the way that we view things is that I was accessing something outside of myself. Mm. It's more that I was able to, to feel the depth of my own love and wisdom mm. and, and contained with that are the higher consciousness metaphysics of self-healing and self-realization. Mm. Mm. And this information you feel was already stored deep within the subatomic particle of yourselves, as indeed it is with all of us which is why you so beautifully refer to it as a remembering. Um, I'm sure you go into the thought process also of that when we exchange on this level of articulation about the quantum healing with it, that is potential within us, that um, we, we, we can say that it's not forgotten, it's just unremembered. And it needs the opportunity, whether that's to do with um, an escalation of consciousness as a result of biochemical interaction taking place which is quite traumatic or severe or startling or dramatic or there's a, another level of trigger which awakens this extraordinary information that is part of the deep recess as it were of our dna um yeah is does this parallel with your thinking feeling yeah, yeah it's re- it's it's absolutely related so what unlocks uh, the DNA is sentience. And mm. now, now when I say sentience, sentience is what we really are. Mm. So from my perspective, my direct experience and my perspective, mm. we are sentience. Sentience is our amount or weight, believe it or not, or level of love and wisdom. That's what we all are. Uh, the subsets of that are our talents and abilities. That is the indirect fractal of God, source, creator, whatever word that you want to use. It is whole and complete as it is. And we're simply working on experiencing the depth and filling the reservoir of love and wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now, the sentience that we are, this indirect fractal of God, and I say indirect because we're a projection of our higher self. So Mm -hmm. it's indirect in that nature, but it is full and complete as it is. Now, what we are, this sentience, is given energy. As an immortal creator being, it is our most precious commodity. Now, this is the energy that we use to perpetually and constantly for eternity create, including incarnations, every thought, every emotion, me moving my, as I talk with my hands, me moving my hands. We are constantly creating. We never stop creating. And in that sense, we are perpetually manifesting at the exact same time. So I just discovered that it's the sentience, the more that you can tap into to the source point of your very existence itself, your own higher mind, that is actually what unlocks all the different codes within the body in terms of unlocking DNA, unlocking higher higher functionality, both sort of uh, clairsentience, clairvoyance, clair the clairs, unlocking that as well as unlocking abilities within the body itself. And part of part of that is the self healing. The body is programmed for self-repair and self-healing. We misprogram it through our rational logic and linear mind, which is a reduction of our higher mind. The higher mind gives birth to the lower consciousness or the rational thinking mind. But you cannot access what you really are through the rational thinking mind. You cannot heal yourself through thought. Healing occurs prior to thinking, prior to emotion, prior to bodily sensations, prior to belief itself. Now, we all self-heal ourselves. We just don't realize this. Mm -hmm. The placebo effect is scientific proof that we heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, most of us, Stuart, are simply looking for a permission slip to allow ourselves to heal. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that permission slip can be going to the doctor, getting a tincture, getting chemotherapy, talking to RJ, wh whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's a permission slip, changing our diet, uh, meditating. We are the ones that heal ourselves. We are this powerful. Mm -hmm. All of us are this powerful. I simply remembered and experienced it tangibly and literally put my body back together. But the inner mechanics or the inner metaphysics of self-healing is the same for me. It's the same for you. It's the same for your neighbor, et cetera, et cetera. It's the exact same thing. And when it's done properly, there's really no limitation in terms of what we can do. And eventually people unparalyzing themselves and putting their body back together uh, will become commonplace. And mm -hmm. me, me doing the so-called impossible is really the permission slip for you to do it for yourself. Brilliant, brilliant. You have such a way with words. You articulate these extraordinarily sophisticated notions of celestial harmony in the most extraordinary way. So may I ask you to go further and to really dig deep into the essence of sentience and the way that you've understood it, because I know you're experiencing it on a very deep experiential level, even though there's been exponential um, growth and cultivation within your being. Um, you have an intuitive understanding. And I quote from your book, remember wisdom and compassion flow through our consciousness as a river of intuition, not through thinking. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is, uh, that is directly what I experienced. And that, that is what I experienced as the quote unquote truth of things. So sent sentience, Stuart, is, is what we are at our core. Right. If we just kept sort of being able to magnify in, 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 in as, a, as, as an analogy, if we could just keep looking deeper and deeper and deeper, we would realize that what we really are is unconditional love. And the summation of unconditional love mm -hmm. is wisdom. Mm -hmm. Right. So all the wisdom added together equals this one vibration of love itself. Mm -hmm. Now, that is what we actually are. We were created from love. We are an aspect of this love. And when we return to that, love dismantles and destroys everything other than itself. Mm -hmm. So the sentience is the summation of all wisdom, this unconditional love. And when we can operate from our own source point, which may sound like, oh, that's impossible. Or, no, it's not. It's not. It takes practice. It takes meditation. It takes proper training. And dare I say my book is, is proper training and proper education. Mm -hmm. But anyone can do it. And thousands of people all over the world have done this. But the source point of what we are, sentience, is this indirect fractal of God, source, creator. It is the I am. I'm sure many people are familiar with the I am. That I am is given energy, and we just keep creating. Now, most of us create from a state of limitation because we're only using our, our lower consciousness or what I call body consciousness, which is five senses and the data stream that comes in through the five senses forms your intellect. Our five senses perceive very, very little of what's actually in the greater reality. And so therefore our intellect is really minuscule in terms of what gave birth to the intellect, which is our own higher mind. So when you tap into your higher mind, you're working at the source point of form and function. I like to call it the Etch-a-Sketch level for those that are old enough to know what Etch-a-Sketch is, right? So when you, when you are able to work at that level, and the book shows you how to do it, you can actually put yourself back together because you're working at the level of where form and function is created. The rational thinking mind is so far downstream from that. Mm -hmm. The rational thinking mind has very little effect on reality creation. We think it does. It, it, it doesn't. It's the subconscious patterned mind. The things that we already accept and agree are really where the reality creation is. So as you actually start to bypass the subconscious mind, and you go into directly the higher mind. The higher mind is, is the imagination of God, source creator. And when you start to tap into that through meditation, it's not as difficult or crazy as it may sound. It's not, it's our natural state. By returning to that, you are, you are, you are seated in your own power because there's no more limitation in that state. The unlimited and the divine, you can do anything. You are unlimited and you are divine. We have to realize this. And I simply, through the destruction of my body, remembered this and then started to do it. Yeah. We're all going to do this. We've mm -hmm. all done it. Most people know, Stuart, that they, they know that they can heal themselves. They know it. They might not have uh, the conscious awareness of how to apply that 
but they know deep down inside that they can do it. And mm -hmm. many of us have. And this book hopefully is uh, is the gateway back into the higher mind and our ability to to be unlimited and divine, which is what we really are. Brilliant. So we're talking about the absolute quintessence of what we were as human beings, and you're addressing what we are becoming, which is a remembering of our vital self. Um, we know that we've been programmed and polluted by programming, particularly over the last 350, 400 years since the, the beginning of the so-called Age of Enlightenment, which is one of the greatest ironies ever. <laughs> and that many of the people that I have in my own field of study in the world of theater have been so fascinated by within the Elizabethan, the people who lived then in post-medievalism, they were completely in touch with sentience in the way that we're describing, and that they would immediately go into nature to be healed if they mm -hmm. felt out of sorts, because they believed that the universe was completely self-organizing and completely self-correcting, and that our bodies are completely self-organizing, completely self-correcting. Anyway, I'm just really giving an illustration to provide context of where I want to go for our listeners, um, because I know you get it immediately. <laughs> so, we, so we have become polluted by the cerebralization of our peoples, and now we're beginning to realize that we're in a quantum and that we need to really address the essence of what you're describing so that we can truly remember the total sentience of our beings. And I know that you've also, um, through your accuracy, have identified seven stages. And I, or, you know, maybe we don't need to go into the seven stages, but I wondered if you could again just give us the um, coat hooks on which this beautiful body of thought is hung that you have discovered our points of definition and points of emphasis and points of skill that allow us to become consistent in the remembering. Because it feels to me that you are suspending time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one way you could say it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, space space and time, just to, just to touch on that for a second. The, the lower frequencies of the physical universe, which is which is where we are right now, what we call the third dimension, from my direct experience, it's, it's the third frequency. Energy exists frequentially, not dimensionally. Dimensions house frequencies. Yeah. Now, we're at the quote-unquote bottom of uh, God, Source, Creator's multiverse, which, have, which I have explored endlessly, not just as RJ. So... The bottom three frequencies band together to form one thing, which is where we get the experience of height, weight, and width. So that that's how that, that's how that works. Now, everything ultimately to go, to go to your question. Otherwise, I'll go on and on. To get to your question, everything is is energy. Now, what commands energy is sentience, which is what which is what we are. Sentience is that divine intelligence, that indirect fractal of God. It is our love and wisdom, and its subsets are our talents and abilities. Now, through that, we command energy. We manipulate energy. We use energy to think, to emote, to move our body. Now, this is the truth here as it is in other realities, other frequencies, and other dimensions. As above, so below. Now, we have simply just lost touch with that knowingness that, we, that we've all had and all experienced when we were experiencing a higher state of consciousness and while incarnating within a higher within a higher frequency realm. Now, as we have plummeted, the fall of man is the fall in frequency. Now, as we've as we've plummeted down the frequencies by becoming obsessed with, with the mental and the physical body, which is how that happens, it drop, you drop in frequency. We lose the connectivity to the knowingness, and the knowingness is replaced with believing. So in lieu of knowing, we now have beliefs. Now, beliefs, by definition, metaphysically, if we could see them, and these eyes can't see them, but the, the higher mind can see it, beliefs are completely disempowering just from a metaphysical perspective. This is important to understand because we do not heal ourselves through belief. This is spiritual fiction. Healing occurs prior to belief. So what a belief is, is a belief is anything whose landing spot lies outside of the self. Now remember, what we are, the self is whole and complete. It's an indirect fractal of God. It's not lacking anything. Think of it as a circle. It's lacking nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. So a belief is disempowering 
because a belief is anything whose landing spot lies outside of yourself. S something along the lines of, well, I believe in heaven out there. Okay. Meaning that it's outside of you. Now that is a fundamental issue that we have and we have to correct all these things because there is nothing outside of the self. It is whole and complete. God is within your consciousness. The tree is in the seedling, mm -hmm. right? This is alchemy 101, right? Yeah. We bring out what is already there. So your ultimate perfection, your divinity, your, uh, your self-realization, your self-healing is already contained within you. Mm -hmm. And when we start to operate that way, instead of reaching out for something, whether it's a tincture or a pill or this, I don't, I don't care what it is, a crystal, it doesn't matter. By believing that something is outside of you that you need, this is already a falsehood. And by disempowering ourselves, we're making it really impossible for us to self-heal as, as, as well as reach self-realization or authentic enlightenment, which are, the, which are the same thing. But if we work inwardly and start to understand the metaphysics and we actually tangibly experience these things through, through following the steps in the book and you start to tangibly feel these things, you actually know, you actually begin to realize that you are healing yourself. You can actually feel it. Mm -hmm. And all of us are able to do this. Mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just remembered, but everyone, everyone can do this. And when we start to work with ourselves inside, mm -hmm. all bets are off. We'll be able to do anything. Beautiful. So here is this rich garden that is within us and without us as well, because what is without is within and what is within is without. It's just that we're constantly doing, doing, doing out there and encouraged to um, l loosen this extraordinary essential knowing, this remembering of sentience within. And for me, you know, my understanding of sentience is primarily through the, sen the, the five senses and how they mark the edge of our consciousness. But for me, it's always been if they mark the edge of our consciousness they are perceptual filters but when they come into unique orchestration through the highly integrated individual physically emotionally mentally and spiritually that we reach a point of center within and therefore there is the hub of sentience which i believe we call many things but particularly soul and how for me the heart is the seat of the soul not up here um, and that mind is literally all the way through the whole membrane the whole sensorium um, so could you take us through the first three steps of um, how you awaken? Because you've given us this amazing garden, but I'm also looking at, okay, so how do we cultivate the garden? Because as we all know, in the conventional sense, gardens can often have weeds. So we need to just unweed. Uh, because, you know, as we were sharing, sharing in the pre-show chat, you have this beautiful lasered energy about the way that you use words, the way that you conjure thought, and that we, in, at least I'm feeling, I hope everybody else is feeling, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm not ignoring you, I'm gonna to come to you in a moment. <laughs> the last 15 minutes of the um, of our conversation, I, I, I would love if you want to ask questions. Um, or I can take observations from the chat box because the people are scribbling away, which is beautiful. It's just that I, I want to hold this membrane that <laughs> the wonderful RJ is creating because he is a master magician and I'm just holding it mm -hmm. so that I can feel the essence of it and also um, be sensible in my questioning. <laughs> um, so if we go to cultivating the garden, mm -hmm. what, are your fur what are your tools? I mean, do you have a hoe? You know, do you sprinkle fairy dust? What do you... <laughs> right, right, okay. So everything, I, I like to say it this way, Stuart, that the self, sentience, soul, what, we can use these words interchangeably. I, I'm specific about what they mean in terms of how I experience them, and there's a glossary and an appendix in the book, me giving yeah. new definitions of things. Yeah. But we can say consciousness, sentience, soul, what, it's fine. Okay, what we are, the self, okay, is meditation. We exist prior to thought. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is very profound. One of the worst things ever been uttered is I think therefore I am. That is completely false. It's completely, completely false. It's quite popular. It's not accurate at all. Okay, so we do need to understand that the self is meditation. It all starts with accessing living being as within for the self. Mm directly. What does that mean? It means non-thought. Mm. What is not thought? Meditation. Mm. Now, what we just said is that the self is meditation. 
Okay. What that means is, is that it is an effortless state of being that requires no trying, no efforting, and no straining to meditate. Hmm. Now, for most of us, and I've certainly heard from many people, they try and try and try to meditate, and they can't, and they do try. They've tried. I can't do it, RJ. It's, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Nonsense. Okay. We are meditation. And I'll, I'll prove to everyone by doing a real magic trick. And as Stuart alluded to being a magician, absolutely. I do real magic and I make no bones about it. Now, magic with a CK, not magic with a C, like three card Monty. I'll talk about that. Magic with a CK is the accessing and utilization of energies that lie outside of physical sensory perception. That is magic. That is also metaphysics. Okay. They're the exact same thing. Okay. Magic is metaphysics and metaphysics is magic. I do magic. Okay. We're going to do some right now. In one second, we're going to break the spell of your ego mind identity in one second, because make no mistake about it. It is a spell. It is, it is the stupor like effect that happens to our higher mind when we come here. And it's called thinking is that stupor like stupor like effect. Okay. Now, this magic trick allows you to break the spell of your ego mind identity in one second and allows you to effortlessly be what you are and effortlessly be in meditation without trying. Okay. This is all you have to do. And the book has several magic tricks in the first book. There's even more magic tricks in other books that are coming up. Okay. Easiest thing in the world. I teach this to children and I teach this to, to people in their 80s and 90s. Okay. All you have to do is pretend that your two eyes are not connected to your brain. <laughs> okay. As you just experienced to it, non-thought. You cannot think. Now, here's what's important about this. One, it's effortless. As I said, the self is meditation. You didn't have to try. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. You are meditation. Okay. The, the other thing is, is that this puts the real you, sentience, the self, the soul, whatever word you want to use, back in the driver's seat of the incarnation. Mm. You now have control over yourself. And now you can create, as the starting point, now you can create the life that you actually desire but because you have self-control. Self-control will lead to self-discipline. And your discipline is your destiny. If we don't have control of ourselves, then we can't create the life that we want. We certainly can't heal ourselves. And we certainly can't experience uh, enlightenment, self-realization, the various levels that are contained within those things. We can't really manifest the things that we want in this life if we don't have control over ourselves. So it's all a matter of instantaneously breaking the spell of the ego mind identity. And the last thing about that is this massive paradigm shift that's encapsulated just in that one magic trick. For most of us, they've spent their, I'm not going to say their whole life, but they've spent many, many years, quote unquote, trying to meditate and trying and trying and trying to get their headset, they get their crystals, they get their incense. And I love that stuff. Their crystals, their incense, their this, that, right? That, that stuff's got nothing to do with meditation. I like them too, but it's nothing to do with meditation. They try and try and try and they can't do it. So we went from not being able to meditate to not being able to think in one second. This is what happens when you work with the truth. It's immediate and it's tangible. It's not filtered. It's not a process. It's not on the way to self-mastery. It is self-mastery. It's immediate. It's tangible. It's now. It's experienced in the moment without effort because it's you. Now, the whole book, the foundation of the, your question about what are these things, everything builds off of what I just said is that understanding that you are meditation. And once you are fully present by doing an instantaneous magic trick, you now have all your energy at your disposal. Your energy is your power. When you harness your power, that is your will, will power. This is the single most important thing to develop is your will power, your ability to command and harness your energy because we use energy for everything, everything. So it only stands to reason having ultimate masterful control over your energy is going to allow you to create your life exactly as you deem fit. Self-healing and self-realization are just part of that. And that all starts with the ability to be present effortlessly by breaking the spell 
of the ego mind identity. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so it is so simple, and yet it's immensely radical. <laughs> A revolution has taken place. Mm. Um, what what I'm intrigued by is I absorb all that you say and pass it through my own filters, and I cohere, I cohere, I cohere. All of what you say, you know, as we discovered when we when we spoke before, is in complete congruence with me. But what I've experienced over the years in in myself and also in all the dear people that come is the inability to be consistent. Mm. Now you have referred to it through will power. I tend to get move into the devotional pathway, and so I speak about devotion and veneration and reverence, and how these are attitudinal muscles that take us into the sacred union within ourselves with the divine, that provide us with consistency, you know, because we know that this word sustainability is actually part of the zeitgeist at the moment in terms of 3D. And so how can we become more sustainable? How can we become more consistent with the flowing energy of the beauty that you've just recommended to us or that we've just indeed accessed through that very simple technique? Yeah, it, it's it, it's just the gaining. Well, let me let me give another example. I like analogies and visualizations and all that stuff. Okay. The reason why we can't be consistent is because we don't have full control or dominion over the body mind complex. And what that really means is that we can't stop thinking. The mind, the the, the rational egoic mind takes over. Or that we're thinking inappropriately. Co correct. Correct. All, all thought, and that might even be a whole nother conversation. <laughs> it but, is. <laughs> yeah. Just, I'll, I'll, I would give you a very uh, radical perspective on what thinking really is. Okay. So uh, that being said, we lose the consistency or to be able to follow through or our willpowers because we don't have complete control over our energy. That's really what's, what happens. We, we lose the ability to be present. Yeah. And when you're present, now, metaphysically, I know these eyes don't see it, but the, it's possible to see these things. So when we're present, here's the analogy. Thinking is, is, is a circular profile, and it's, a, it's, it's an electrical uh, event. It's electricity running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's really flipping through the Rolodex of past memories and yeah. then projecting that into a future. Mm. That's really what thinking is, right? It's it's almost useless. I promise it's almost useless. Mm. So, okay. Now, the reason why we can't stay consistent is because we don't have control over that. Mm. Okay. So what we just did, the instantaneous magic trick, which allows you to be fully present and have complete control over yourself. Now, here's what's happening metaphysically, okay? Now, we talked about a circular profile of energy just rushing through the mental body and actually even the lower astral, which is where the deep-rooted beliefs and identifications sit in the lower astral. And that's the information that trickles down frequently like a slinky going down the stairs into the mental body. What you've identified yourself with is what you think about. And then by emotionalizing it over, you fully charged your body and you then take action on it. Now, that's actually what happens from a higher consciousness perspective. Now, how we gain dominion so the real you and not your ego mind identity, which is ruining all of our lives, quite frankly, by having dominion over this, it's simply by, here's the visual. We've all seen water drain from a sink, from a bathtub, you know, whatever. We've all seen water go down the drain, right? Okay. This is what all of us need to become masterful with in order to gain dominion so we can be consistent, so we can get the results that we desire. So all we have to do is imagine all this energy in your head, thinking, 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 da, 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 right? Okay. Now just imagine water draining from your bathtub, <laughs> right? Your steward's, because steward's very highly evolved. He already, he's already got it. I haven't even done it yet. He's already got it. Okay. So the energy is just dropping down, like water draining from your sink, from your bathtub, whatever. Energy dropping down. Okay. Now look at my eyes. Okay. There's no thought there. There's no thinking that goes on in my head at all, right? Now, once the energy is out of your head, you can't think. Okay, now we take that one step further, okay? So as the energy is dropped out of your head, now there's clarity. Now you're present. Let that energy continue to drop down past the throat, past the chest. 
Now, once we start to get to the solar plexus, sort of the solar plexus and stomach area, this is sort of the emotional body center. Okay, so this is where we want that water or the energy drain further down, all the way down, past your chest, past your stomach, and then let your energy sit, because this is where it does sit. It's like the gas tank. Let that energy drop all the way down to just beneath your belly button above your groin, your lower belly. And you can even just put your hand there as good practice. Now, in this state, there's no energy, so there's no thought. You've unplugged it. It can't, it, there's no circular profile of thinking, thinking, it's over. You drain the energy. And now same thing with your emotional body. It's like a, a, a lake, just totally placid, no waves, no choppiness, no nothing. Now you have complete dominion over your body-mind complex. The key is to practice this over and over and over again. We get good at what we do repetitively, good or bad. We get good at what we do repetitively. Now, if you want to create the life that you truly desire, if you want to heal yourself, if you want to reach self-realization, et cetera, what, I don't care what it is. It doesn't even matter. The specifics never matter. You do it by understanding these higher consciousness metaphysics by controlling your energy. It's that simple. Now, as soon as we start to lose this command, this dominion over our body of energy, and the mind is becoming too active and the, the emotionalizations are getting out of control, just simply do this again. And then once you have complete command, your beingness, human being, your beingness is now online. Take your beingness and put it into your doingness. Don't bring in the mind. Take the beingness and put it into your doing this. As soon as you bring this in, your ego mind, that's just your conditioning. That is a limitation program that runs by thinking. So that is what has to, has to uh, be overcome or transcended. And all sickness and disease comes from disharmonious thought patterns. So once we gain this kind of dominion, Stuart, and it's very simple. We just did it. Yeah. We yeah. just did it. Yeah. We practice, practice, practice until that becomes second nature. And we will have complete command over our energy and there will be no more inconsistency. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is ticking on and I want to invite you to ask, you can hear the wizardry of, of RJ's extraordinary experience and that that he has reckoned as a result. Um, and he's living it in a very sentient way. So please ask questions. Nobody's asking questions. You're just having a chat with us. <laughs> but keep your, your questions really, really concise. Here's an opportunity to learn. Um, all that you're describing to me is something that I teach, which is about flow. Um, that we're not in flow, that we're which is what the pixelation of thought is all about, so many opinions. And of course, we've been educated and socialized, conditioned into being that way through Western, Western, Western educational models and all the other doing, 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 doing. And most of the time, of course, as we both know, we're not doing what we could be doing because they say so. So it's all externalized, isn't it? And you're bringing us wonderfully back into our beings. And what I'm reminded of as you speak is that we can't think when we're sounding. When we're chanting in flow, you can't think, you just sound. So again, it's a way of being able to disturb the, I can't meditate, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, uh, there are great gems within this. Um, what do you feel that you have acquired post-recovery now in this extraordinary life that you have where you're working with thousands and thousands of people? What do you feel has been the major boon for you personally as a result of the extraordinary experience, apart from the fact that you dance with the wonder of all the extraordinary sensations that you're talking about? What is the main boon? Oh, that, that I'm able to be of service, which is really why I'm here. Uh, we give ourselves challenges and within the life plan. And when we're able to transcend those, we then can offer up what it is that we have learned to others. And so I have, uh, in this incarnation, I've overcome, I guess, you know, transcended paralysis and uh, sickness and, uh, and, and the lower consciousness, quite frankly. So 
by overcoming my own personal challenges, which we put into our life plan, as we, we talked about before, my last name is Spina, which means spine. What a coincidence. It's not. This was all planned out. I gave myself this challenge. So by overcoming the challenge, I'm, I have put myself, we could say, I have put myself in position to be able to be of greater service to humanity because of what it is that I tangibly understand and frankly, because of what it is that I tangibly embody the wisdom that is that is me, if, if, if you will, or the other way around, you could say that too. So by being able to be of service is really been the biggest, uh, the biggest benefit. Uh, it, it's, I'm really just sharing my love. Mm. This, this is just me. Mm. This is really me. Forget the, forget the suit I'm wearing. Mm. Forget what I look like. Forget that. Mm. What comes through me is really me, the timeless me. And so I get to serve humanity and consciousness itself by bringing the best of me mm. into this realm and infusing this realm with my love and wisdom. And those higher frequencies, a rising tide lifts all ships. So for me, it's the ability, Stuart, to, to be of service. It is, my, it is my honor. It is my love. It is my joy. It is my passion. It is also my responsibility, mm. quite frankly. Mm. to do this, to mm. be this, to teach this, however, however you want to say that. But my, the ability to serve, I'm just so grateful that I can continue this incarnation as RJ, whoever RJ is, continue this incarnation and just offer up what it is that I tangibly understand. And when people work with these things or just when they simply connect, watching interviews with me or this or that, they feel different. Mm. Something is happening. Mm. It is. Mm. It, it, it is. So all of the confusion, all of the lower consciousness is literally being dispersed when you connect with high frequency. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like if you put something in the hot tub, it's going to get hot, right? So when you connect with the authenticity, that high frequency disperses all the confusion, all the doubt, all the worry, all these things, and you start to experience more of yourself. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just the ability to be able to serve and to to help humanity and its in its evolution and uh, whatever role I can play in that, and I play the role of RJ, whoever RJ is in this life. It's 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 my honor, it's it's my love, and it's my it's my responsibility. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But authenticity is the key because we feel it so easily with you that you've mastered the physical uh, instrumentation of these extraordinary ideas and feelings in such a way that we know that you are completely authentic, you know, that we feel it in our, in our very beings. And I believe that that comes through your immense innate love and the playfulness with which you engage with these ideas. Um, you know, it's interesting that um, when I was saying, do you have any questions? And somebody that I know very well, Laura Henderson says, we're quiet from being just sat enthralled with the brilliant conversation. And we know that within the inspirational realms, within the enthralling and enthusiasm, the, you know, the root of the word enthusiasm, meaning to be lit up, that we know that there is this. And so thank you, Laura, for stating this. It's wonderful. I kept on saying to the group that I was with on Saturday, you know, do you have any questions? And they, there was this silence, you know. <laughs> and then somebody said, we feel so inspired. <laughs> which is beautiful because in many ways we're drinking in mm. much of your elemental congress i know is water and you were drinking in the great water or the great nectar of spirit and then what i'm interested in is how we can then remember the enthrallment the inspiration mm. the love the play um somebody is actually asking in the chat box uh Okay, good. I'm glad you're saving it. Um, they're soaking it up. I see. <laughs> a DZ is saying I'm soaking it up. Um, alcohol and nicotine play in energy flow, which is this is written by the prophet. Prophet. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. The prophet. Prophet. Okay. The question is, how does alcohol and nicotine play into energy flow? Is that the is that the question? Apparently, yes. <laughs> okay. So. Okay, so any time that we, I'll, I'll explain it this way. Um, anytime we use a physical interface, alcohol, nicotine, or something else, but the question was alcohol. So anytime we use a physical interface, we are 
limited to the energies associated with the physical interface. So all of these things actually block energy flow because we're limited to the energies associated with the physical interface itself. So really you don't wanna use anything. Ultimately, what you just wanna do is open up your own higher mind to be able to receive as much wisdom and energy flowing through you unencumbered. So as soon as we use a physical interface, we're actually slowing that process down because we, we become associated with the energies that are intrinsically associated with the physical interfaces themselves. So uh, from a certain perspective, as, 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 as well, everything I say is probably odd, right? But from a certain perspective, as odd as it sounds, uh, any physical interface is going to limit you. And it doesn't matter what it is, no matter how high a regard we hold it. Yeah. So we want to be able to work with the unlimited self mm. and we're all that unlimited self, but we're trapping ourselves in the closet of the logic and linear rational thinking mind, which is just your, con your, just your conditioned mind that you've gotten from your trip here. Mm. The way everything that you think about has to do with what's here. You're not from here. You didn't, you don't have to fit in. You didn't come here to stay. The key is to know yourself, self-realization, right? Know thyself, right? Not know the beliefs, concepts, and ideologies of the 21st century. They're really useless. Yeah. They'll only inhibit you. So these things block, they block energy flow because you're then limited to the energies associated with the physical interface. What we really are doesn't need anything. We're whole and complete as we are. And when you work with yourself, from my perspective, when you work with yourself properly, you'll realize that you don't need anything, that you already are everything. And all you have to do is experience that tangibly and fully by having complete control over the body mind complex. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's asking another question, um, which is all about flow. Is there a specific diet or food substance that helps flow of energy? <laughs> yeah, none. So <laughs> yeah. So, so zero, um, the book, there's a whole section in the book about fasting. Okay. Now I'm not a doctor, so I'm not telling anybody to fast. And if I was a doctor, I never would have been able to heal myself. So, but the thing about fasting, think of food as information because it is. Now, every time you put information in, your body has to process it, which means it has to work. Okay. We do not get energy from food. That is not, it's not true. Our chakra system are the energy metabolizers and transformers that actually allow us to be here. Now, we can actually, not again, not with these physical eyes, but we can actually see the chakra system. I'm certainly not the only person that can see the chakra system and how it works. I outline it in the book, and so have others. But when we really understand the chakra system, we understand that that's the energy transformers and metabolizers. It's not food. If you see yourself as a physical being, you're not. You're an energy being. But if you misperceive, misunderstand, and misidentify, a lot of misses there, trifecta. If you see yourself as a physical being, you're going to have to eat, Yeah. right? Yeah. If you don't see yourself as a physical being, you see yourself as an energy being, mm -hmm. temporarily using this biological garment to, to immerse yourself within physical reality, you're going to have a much easier time fasting. And as you fast, you'll get clear enough by breaking certain habits that you'll then truly understand what your physical vehicle actually really wants in terms of food to operate optimally. Mm -hmm. But the only way to do that from my perspective is to go long enough without eating. I don't mean to starve yourself. It's not what I'm talking about, but to break the habits and then your body will tell you what it wants. I went three weeks, uh, numerous times. I went three weeks without eating because for, well, for a variety of reasons, it's a spiritual practice for me, but I went three weeks without eating. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of three weeks, I remember the morning, the last time I did it, Stuart, after three weeks, I remember I was like, oh boy, I think I, I, think I need to eat today. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, better, I better eat something. But at, but at that point, there, there was no, um, oh, I want sugars and sweet. It, that, that stuff was gone. I had purified myself mm -hmm. uh, on the deepest levels. So I literally said to, to my body, what do you want? Because I have no desires for anything. What do you want? My body told me exactly what it wants. And that meal, I had that exact same meal. It drove my girlfriend crazy. I had that exact, exact same meal once a day, exact same meal for well over a year. 
But that's exactly what my body wants to run optimally. We only find this out until we break the habits and the identifications and the attachments that we have to certain things. Then your body will tell you exactly what it needs to run optimally. Um, somebody disagree. Somebody, somebody's just uh, written up. I disagree. I don't think you do actually, Celtic fairy. I think if you listen into what RJ is saying, it's not that he's saying we don't need food. He's talking about the the uh, quotient of energy and how energy is transformed into light. Obviously, we are light beings. This is what he's actually saying. It, you know, another parallel is that these 12 angels that have worked with me for the last 35 years are saying to me, please tell everybody, do not eat meat, because meat is dead flesh. It has no light. But eat light. So this is what really he's saying. This has been an amazing co conversation, amazing deep dialogue, and I want to thank you really deeply. Firstly, RJ, for being here and sharing with us so generously and with such love and joy your amazing, um, your amazing consciousness, but also for all you wonderful people that are coming into view. And I want to leave you with one of the enticing phrases, you know, as you can hear, RJ is immensely articulate. And in his book, he writes, perpetually and potently stay in the realm of transcendent creativity and never forget your objective. Mm -hmm. RJ, thank you so much, my friend. Please stay where you are. And everybody who's tuned in, well done for tuning in for this remarkable deep dialogue. And next week, I have somebody really remarkable as well in the form of Jonathan Goldman. So those of you who are interested in sound healing, then come and meet Jonathan, one of my dearest friends. Bless you. Bless you. Take care. Thank you, Ryan. See you in a second. <laughs>